How can I survive in your absence? All my life, I was born to give you the praise. Oh, you make me smile. Now I've come to say face to face. One of my bimbo. Praise the Lord. So, I am thanking God for everything he has done for me. So, I, w- I know you're guessing why I want to thank him. Well, I'm like Mo, the song we just danced. It's just that we don't know how to thank him. Because he has done so much for us. There is no way to describe how he has done everything for us. The word of the Lord works. The spirit of the word locks. The tithes and offerings we pay also work. But as teenagers, we go through different problems in our lives. There was a time when I faced different problems, and the Lord gave me a word for each and every one of them. When I was depressed, Psalm 34, 34 verse 17, For the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivers them from all their troubles. When I was poor, chronic poverty, Philippians 4.19, for my God will supply all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. When I used to just lie and lie and lie. First John 1 verse 9, we say, if we sin against God, if we sin against God, faithfulness, which he There was also a time when I allowed myself to be dragged into, I stayed with bad people, but the Lord saved me. 1 Corinthians Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33, don't be deceived, because bad company corrupt good manners.
when I was afraid of every single thing that I saw. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. But the Lord has not given us the, the spirit of fear, but of love and of, and of power and of a sound mind. When I was addicted to hard drugs, codeine, for example. James 4 verse 7. But 7b, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When I was the most foolish person, Miss Seth, I knew I was foolish. I was foolish. Ecclesiastes 6, 7 verse 5. It is better to listen to a wise man rebuke than to listen to the song of fool. When I felt no one loved me or who wanted me. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, I give you only the good news one. That whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When I failed at everything I touched. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when I fell sick at littlest of things. Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and you, I will be saved, for you are the one that I praise. So church, the spirit of the Lord works. The word of the Lord works. Our tithes and offerings work. It they work, it they work, it they work. It they work, it they work, it they work. It they work, it they work, it they work. I'm the beat. Keep saying, don't stop talking up. Close mouth is a close mouth destiny. Quiet business, down quietly. If you must leave right, don't listen to the right thing. Ha, 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 it is speaking tongues. Uh, calm down. This is not my secret. Now the power and the glory of this entity. When I speak in tongues, I mean ain't circumstances. Speak in tongues. Move over the mountain. When I speak in tongues, I change situations. Speak in tongues to the devil in confusion. Yeah. This is our life, our culture. We are from the common of Zion. We live by a difference of the rules. This is what we do and this is how we rule. The word of God in my mouth. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord in my heart. Yeah. When I speak in tongues. Yeah. Even my tithes and offering. Yeah. The name of Jesus in my mouth. Yeah. If you want your life to take a new turn, all you need to do is say these words after me. Say, Lord, Lord I believe. I believe. Receive the power to become the son of God. Lord, I believe in you, and I receive the power to become the son of God. The word of God in my mouth, the spirit of the Lord in my heart. When I speak in tongues, even my tithes and offering, the name of Jesus in my mouth. It work, it work. You say it work. Work, sir, be the overwork. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for the Lord. Today, just in the house. Hallelujah. Let there be an opera. Amen. Tell somebody today, not today. And we are just starting. Teenagers, you have to let them know. Let's eat pepper the adults. That we are coming from where we went and we came back and we are not the same. Just let them let it pepper them. Give give one power. Power, teenagers, one power. Rub it on your shoulder and blow it. Oof. Hallelujah. It they work. Okay. I'm here because we, we've, had, we've had some beautiful, wonderful teenagers. You know, we saw them 
came into the Teens Church at 13 years old, and they have been so wonderful. They have been good children. We've seen them developed spiritually, physically, emotionally, and in every good way. But we know that they have to grow into adults, as all of us are growing every day, and some of them have grown into adults. And it is time to move on, to move on, to go and affect nations, to go and, to go and begin to manifest that which has been given to them in the Teens Church by the Spirit of the Lord. Now I'm here because we're going to graduate some teenagers. Some of them actually are not around, but we don't want you to look at them as they are still teenagers when you see them. Now, if you call them a teenager, it will be offensive to them. So we need to let you know some of those people. We are graduating them, and let me tell you the truth. Some of them don't want to go. They don't want to go. They don't want to go. And we too, we don't want to release them, but we have to release them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as I call some of them, some of them are not around. Some of them are even over, over 20. They are 21, but we just need you to recognize them, praise the Lord, and celebrate them. Please, can we have the youth ESCO, or the youth president, and those to receive these teenagers, as I call their names. Fumi Olushola. Fumi Olushola. Let's celebrate Fumi. Fumi Olushola, where are you? Let's celebrate her. She's coming from the gallery. Frank Inua. Frank Inua. Let's celebrate them, teenagers. Anthony Poker. Anthony. Let's celebrate Anthony. Wonderful praise leader. Let's celebrate Joshua Ukwela. He's not around. Joshua Ukwela, a gentleman. Gentleman, but fire in the spirit. Let's celebrate Jessica Ijebo. Jessica is not around, but let's celebrate Jessica. Some of these people are gentle giants. You don't know what they carry. They may just be going gently, but they are gentle giants. Let's celebrate Victoria Ode. Victoria Ode is one of the coordinators at the camp. She's no longer a teenager. Let's celebrate Victoria. Praise the Lord. These are the wonderful teenagers, and as we hand them over to the youth ministry, we don't want them to get lost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I would like to invite our HOM, Ms. Sister Tokbae Kayode Ojo, to, to pray for these ones as they move into the, as they move into the adult church. My name is Rockbo. I'm not Tokwe. <laughs> Shall we pray? Ancient of days, we give you glory. We appreciate you for who you are. We thank you because from everlasting to everlasting, you remain the same. Thank you for your children. Thank you for this want. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that endureth in their life. We give you praise because of where you are bringing them from. We thank you for where they are now. And we want to say thank you for where they are going. Thank you, O oh God of heaven and earth, for what you will do in their lives. What you are yet to use them for. Because they are vessels of honor. Because they are the carrier of your grace. Because they are the axe in your hands. Because they are, they are your battle hand. Because they are the ensign to this generation. We give you praise, O oh God of heaven and earth. Because as they graduate from teenagers to going to youth ministry, Father, you are not going to stop with them. Father, we ask, O oh God Almighty, for the strength. We ask for the grace. We ask for the anointing that we carry them through. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God of heaven and earth, that the church will continue to march on concerning this one, through this one. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that from glory to glory, you will continue to change them. And they will continue to change to the likeness of the Son of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. These ones, they will not die. They will live to declare your glory in this land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ. At this end time, O oh God of heaven and earth, they will shake the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray. Lord, that even in their secular life, Father, they will know you. 
they will continue to radiate your glory. They will change lives. They will touch lives in the name of Jesus Christ. In their family life, King of glory, they will be different in the name of Jesus Christ. These ones will be those ones that have put their hands to the plow and they will not look back until the day of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days. In the youth ministry, Lord God Almighty, they will shine. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as Sokoro Church, we continue to march on. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And on Friday, we are going to be having a special reception for you guys. You're welcome into the service. Thank you. And all the youths, 530. We, the teen choir, have a special number titled Worship Rise by Travis Green. And as you listen, we ask that the Lord touches your heart and you pick something up from the words of a song in Jesus' mighty name.
Let my worship rise Like a sweet perfume Upon my love My love All over you Let my worship rise Like a sweet Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Can we be outstanding as we celebrate him? Just celebrate him. Amen. This morning we are going to have two preachers at, at a stretch. One of the teenagers will minister and I will come up to round it up. Please help me welcome our beloved daughter, Precious. Put your hand together for her as she comes up. Please celebrate her. Celebrate her. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. You are welcome to the presence of God because his presence is here. Let us prepare our minds. Let's bow our heads in prayer. King of glory, we thank you for today and for bringing us to your presence. Lord, we pray that as a vessel as I am in your house, a vessel unto honor, as I give out today, it will be from your heart but not from my loins. It will be from you but not from me. I'm only a vessel you will use to give out your message today in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Today, based on the theme for this year's Things Week, the topic is clay in the potter's hand. And our text, the main Bible reading will be taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1 to 6. And I'm going to read... And please, I would want everyone to read along because it's just six verses and I believe it's possible. Let's read. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, okay. Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands. Somebody praise the Lord. So first of all, I would like to go a bit scientific. Clay, just normally, clay is a soil, a type of soil. And it is normally used to make vessels and other materials. So clay, that's what it is. And the potter is, a potter is one who who is creative and makes materials and makes things out of ordinary clay, mere clay. And based on what we are doing now, and based on what the Lord said to Jeremiah, we are the clay in his hands and he is the potter. And because we are the clay in his hands and because he is the potter, one of the things as clay that we are, we are supposed to do. Number one is to be submissive. We are supposed to be obedient. Other synonyms you can use, submissive, obedient. You don't tell your master what to do. A child that was conceived in the womb of the mother did not tell the mother 
that he wanted to be in her womb. God puts that child there for a reason. And, the re and God is making us, every one of us here today, we are all clay in his hands. And according to 18 verse 4, said the clay was marred. Another synonym I will use is scattered. It was broken in the hands of the potter. And then he said, he, he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to him. So, I would explain this as, we have gone through so many things in life. So many of us have gone through so many things in our lives. But it doesn't matter what you have gone through. Because some people have gone through worse things. But it doesn't actually matter what you've gone through. But because the potter is present, but because the potter is alive, He's going to be there to mold you as seem good to him. He's going to mold you as seem good to him. Because he's going to rebuild you to a better person than you used to be. Because when you redo something, you feel like maybe this thing broke because it wasn't better the last time. So he makes it better. So he's making your life better in Jesus' name. So, as I said, a potter is one who is skilled in the art. And yes... Another characteristic of the clay sorry, is that it is a choice material by the potter. I was made to know during the teens camp that um, when Mommy Victoria came to preach, she started talking about the clay in the potter's hand. That the clay has gone through so many processes. The normal clay, not us now. It has gone through so many processes. It has gone through weathering. And then when it is there, the people, they, the potter, they come and take it and they make it into something. And as Christians and as the clay, we go through a lot before the potter now picks us and makes us into what he wants. Clay is not, any, is not just any type of material. He could have easily, a potter could have easily used sand to mold. He could have easily used loam to mold. He could have easily used silt to mold. But he chose clay and he chose it for a reason. And, he cho and because each and every one of us, because we are special people, he has chosen every one of us for something special in Jesus' name. And now I will go to the characteristics of the potter. The potter is a creative person. He's an artisan. You will not be able to make something if you are not creative. Your imagination has to be wide. And you have a wide imagination. And you make something. And to the extent that even when it breaks, you are still able to pick it up and make it into something better. So today, um, because he was able to make it into something else, that means his designs change. You know, God is the potter, right? His mind changes but he never changes. He is still who he is. Although he can decide to change his mind at any time towards anything he wants to do. So that's one very important thing I've learned. That God never changes, although his mind changes. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So. Another characteristic of the potter. He will never replace us. The clay was mad in his hand. He could have easily just thrown that one away and, and he would have taken another one, but he did not. He decided to change it, to make it better. And this will take me to another thing. He made it better because he loves us. He loves his work. And that is why he was able, he did not have the mind to replace us because each and every one of us, we are all special. We are all special to him. And he takes his time to do all these things for us. He doesn't just do anything. And he never gets tired of us. Even though we keep going through things, you keep coming back to God, you go back again, you come back, you go, you come back, it's just back and forth. But he will never get tired of you. He never gets tired of us. He is never tired of us. And this is the truth. If you're in a close relationship with him, and you know the kind of things you've been doing that will annoy this God. And you know that he's still doing other good things for you. You should know that he loves you. He is in love with you and you should love him too. Because he loves us. 
And so, from this short message, I really don't have much on my plate, but I really hope and pray that someone here has been touched by the potter's hand. Hallelujah. One of the verses that touched my heart in that scripture, I would like us to look at it. Verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make. It has been established that the potter is God. It has been established that we are declared. One question I want to drop with you is this. You, you don't need to raise up your hand to answer it. Answer it where you are sitting down in your heart. How many times will you be mad in the hand of God? Precious told us that God will not leave you. No matter how many times you keep going out from his presence and doing some things that he doesn't want. As much as you come back, that God is willing to pick you together and do that which is good to him. But I want to ask you, George, excuse me, sir. How many times will you continue to be mad in the hand of God? Young man, how many times will you continue in that thing you are doing? Believing that the potter will still gather you again. How many times God is looking for you? God has drawn you. The more he draws you, the more you run outside of him. How many times... Excuse me. Think of it. If a man can be spoiled in the hand of the almighty God, where will you be good? If a man, God is trying to mold you, the more he tries to mold you, the more you misbehave. Where? In which person's hand? Will you be molded into that image that will be suitable? Think about it. We don't have much time this morning. Think about it. I would like you to also remember as much time as you have to go and do stupid things and you think you can run back, the butter can catch up with you. There might be a time that you will not have another opportunity. Church, stop playing church. Christianity is a life. Are you linked to God? He wants to help you. How many times have you said, I will not do this again? You have cried in meetings and revivals and fellowship. But the moment the program finished, you went back to your vomit. God is asking, how many times will you be mad in my hand? How many times will you come to God this morning and say, God, I want to permanently be made into that thing that seems good? It's possible. There is something God wants to make out of you that will profit your generation. Allow God to do it. It's only human beings that want to dictate for God what they want. He will never let me fall. He will never let me fall. He is never weary. He will never let me fall. 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 He will never let me
never let me fall. He's never weary, and he will never let me fall. Matthew chapter 18, verse 28. And Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor with heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The potter is here. The potter wants to help you. The potter wants to make you to become that which he wants you to be. You can't continue be getting man in the hand of the potter. Come as you are. He loves you. There is no doubt about it. He's interested in you. There is no doubt about it. But he wants you to remain in that will that keep running so that you will be able to mold you. If clear does not stay on that wheel as the potter is turning it, if the clear refuse to stay on that wheel that is rolling so that the potter will make it, nothing good will come out of the clear. Many people are not willing to stay on the wheel of God as he turns them. And listen, when the clear is turning on that wheel, Sometimes it's not palatable. The potter press it in, press it out. All those pressing so that the best of you will come out. Any Christianity that is without troubles of life is fake. I repeat. But you don't pray for troubles of life. It's part of them. The potters allow them. It's part of the pressure. It's part of the pressing in and pressing out. But as long as you want that wheel that is rotating in the hand of the potter, there is an assurance that you will come out fine. I'm, I'm telling you. There is an assurance that you will come out fine. A lot of people are looking for Christianity on the platter of gold. It doesn't work like that. In as much as nobody prays for trouble, I don't see where you go to prayer meeting and be praying. Father, bring trouble to me. Let me see trouble. Nobody prays that kind of prayer. But whether you pray it or you don't pray it, it comes. It's part of the process of making you become who you are. Some years ago, I had a trouble. Very, very terrible trouble. My most senior sister that brought all of us up was involved in this crazy explosion. Those of you remember the era of crazy explosion. Oh my God. My senior sister was born from head to her lower abdomen. My senior sister, she's, a, she's very bossy. One of the breasts, the left hand breast was raised down. My senior sister has long hair. The hair was raised down. When I go to Kubwa Hospital, I couldn't recognize her. She was the one that was saying, hey, see me. And when I saw her, I broke down in tears. George, I don't know what you are going to. Don't run out of the will of God. We are God is tearing. It's not the best. I've never seen a better platform. I've never seen a better place than inside Jesus. Every other ground is a seeking ground. I don't know what they are telling you. Don't try any place. Some of you have tried other places. You can confirm that the best place is in Jesus. 
Why am I telling you this story? Troubles of life is part of the making of the potter. D don't run out. Bro, don't jump out of church. That place you want to go is not better. Stay there. It's better you are mine in the hand of the Lord than that you are mine in the hand of Satan. He will not spear you. Ask those who are servants of Satan. When they make small mistake, they pay dearly for it. See grace we are enjoying. How many times have you committed abortion? And the Lord is still patient with you. How many times have you done all manner of abominable things and you still come to church and God was patient with you? Try you with Satan. To compound my trouble then, my senior sister had issues with her husband. The man just left to a place that nobody knows. The only daughter they had in their relationship died in that fire accident. Two years ago, I buried her in Bagolada burial ground. I was battling with the life of my sister. Two months after, my senior sister died. Listening to this story. That's why I've not seen anything that will push me out of Christ. It doesn't matter what brother. So people just get angry. Look at them. Look at them. They don't greet me well. Uh, did you come to church because of them? Are they the one that died on the cross of Calvary? Are they the one that will take you to heaven? My greatest joy is that I have never seen anyone that will stand at the gate of heaven to introduce any person to God. I'm yet to see. I've not seen anyone. It doesn't matter your post, your position. You will never introduce any person to God. Your recommendation will not matter. Recommendation of men will matter here, but not with God. But why? Why do I say so? Because God knows you. He knows you in and out. He does not need anybody to introduce him or to talk about you to him. So, she died. My word crumbled. To compound my matter, I don't even know the family where she was married to. Because the marriage was not correct. I was left to carry my senior sister. In the midst of this trouble. That is why I have seen God. I have hear God. I have experienced God. I have come to see that God is more than able to do abundantly more than what he say he can do. When you trust him and depend on him and remain on that wheel that is rolling like this as a clear, it does not matter how long you stay there, you will come out fine. You will come out fine. Listen, church. My trouble increased. When I ran to the church where she was worshiping, a pastor of the church said, your senior sister has left our church one month ago. She's no longer a member of the church. My sister was not there. My sister was not there. I was a very young man. God was watching to see what I would do. I look up and down, my world crumble. That time they don't do coffin in Abuja and place it here and there. I was going up and down to see who will make coffin for my sister. My world crumbled. In the midst of that troubles and pain, one woman of God from Foursquare, Mrs. Orebajo, I will never forget. I don't know she knows me. She came from nowhere and came and located my senior sister's place where we were mourning her. That was when I know that God knows me. That was why I know that troubles of life you are going to do. God knows about them. That was why I know as long as you remain on the wheel that is rotating as a clear, he will never let you fall. 
Reverend Mrs. Orebajo ran to the house. I've not known her well. As she greeted me, said, Brother, I used to see you in first square. I would say, I said, Yes, ma. He said, You are one of the youth that always endear my heart. I said, Yes, ma. He said, The Lord said, I should tell you. And the woman gave me some 46, verse 1. I've been reading some 46. That deadly date, some 46, verse 1, became life to me. She did not give me money, but she gave me a war. That word kept me. That word transformed me. That word made me to stand on my feet. Oh, and he said, God says, I should tell you, the Lord is our refuge. A very present help in the time of trouble. That was the word. And the woman disappeared. I didn't see her again until we finished burial. And I knew this was God. And I, I was reciting it. I went and read it. Every day I was reading The Lord is my refuge. A very present help in the times of trouble. God is with me. That is the potter for you. That is the potter. I said, please stay on the wheel. Excuse me. There is somebody here and want to run out of the wheel. Don't go. Jesus is saying, come to me. I am the one that can help you alive. Don't go another place. The person is here. Don't check another place. Stay here. Stay on that wheel. As the porter is pressing the clear in and out. If the clear has mouth, the clear will say, but oh boy, why are you pressing me like that? And the porter will answer, it's for your good. So that you come out fine. I'm not just trying to wound you. I'm trying to make the best of you. I'm trying to make the best of you. And when I go to the village to bury my sinners, I don't know where to carry. I took her to my village. When I got there, elders of my village gathered and said we must bury her now because tomorrow is our market day. We don't bury somebody on market today. The evangelist in me rose up. And I look at the elder and say, you will not try it. Try it, you will not. The Lord is my refuge. A very present care in times of trouble. The elders with white hair and white beards. And they look at me and say, young man, you are you are trying to try the goals of the Lord. I say, no. The Lord is my refuge. A very present help in the time of trouble. As I was going, I hear the voice of Reverend Mrs. Orebacho ringing in my ear. I keep reciting the scripture. On the following day, every year that disappear. I buried my sinner sister. They say, I will see. I have only seen Jesus. Nothing has happened. I am still standing on my feet. I will not see anything past the glory of God. I will not see anything past the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Who is that one that is harassing you? What is that thing that is making you? You want to run out of the wheel. The master is saying, stay. Stay. Did you hear the prophecy this morning? Those of you that used to come to church early. That was a word for us. Stay on that wheel. Stay. The wheel is rotating. Don't jump out. Just stay. The Matthew eleven twenty eight will work for you. Come. Everyone that labor, everyone that is going through pain, I will give you rest. Let us pray. Let us pray. Kaboshakala bruku to kayabosh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, have mercy. Is anybody talking to God or you are waiting for prayer point? I don't have anyone. 
I don't have any prayer point, but if you listen to God, just talk back to God this morning. Clear in a potter's hand. God is the potter. Raise prayer point for yourself. I don't know what you want to tell the Lord. Sometimes when we hear the word of God, we'll be waiting for prayer point. Will somebody tell you prayer point? Have we heard the word of God if your ear was open as the word was coming? You will never let me fall. <laughs> you will never let me fall. You are never weary. You will never let me fall. You will never let me fall. You will never let me fall. You, me fall. you are ever. You will leave, and you will never let me fall. Somebody talk to the Lord. I will refuse. I refuse to fall from the wheel. Is there anyone that is here? You have been mad in the hand of God. I started this short message by saying, if you are mad in the hand of God, where in which person hand will you be good? If a whole God is trying to mold you and you refuse to be molded, where will you be molded? You see anyone that wants to say, God, I don't want to mind you in hand again. I'm coming to you. Can you run to the altar quickly? We don't have time. You see anyone that wants to say, God, several times you are trying to mold me. I have refused to be molded, but this morning I am running back as a piece of clear. Put me together again and mold my life. Who is that one? Come. Come quickly. Who is that person that want to say, God, I am mad in your heart. I want to be molded again. I don't want to remain the way I am. I am coming with my body, with my pains. Come and give me rest. Who is that one? Please, can you come? Come. Come quickly. God bless you. Come. Come quickly. Come. Come with speed. I never see anyone like you. 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 Yeah. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Father, I never see any God like you. Yeah. Hey. Join us. Like you. you say, God, that I'm tired I to be broken in your hand. I need like help. You. Run out. God is here. I never see hey. any God like you. Come, come as you are. I never see anyone like you, Baba me. I never see any God like you. Talk to God. Cry. Cry to him. Come quickly. You are the one we are waiting for. Come. How many times will you be broken in the hand of the Lord? Help has come. Help has come. Say God help me. Cry, cry to the Lord. Say God, I won't continue this way. God, I need help. God, I need help. God, 
God is trying to mold you. You are breaking in the hand of God. If you break in the hand of God, in which person's hand will you be used for? In which person's hand will you allow God? Will, will you be steady so that it will, you will be molded? I never seen anyone like you. I never seen anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. Somebody like cry to the Lord. This is opportunity. I never see Jesus is here. Like you. I never see anyone like you. Abba wa ba we. Abba wa ba we. Abba wa ba we. Jehovah le. Abba wa ba we. Amen. Church, stretch forth to our hands. If God is trying to mold somebody and the person is breaking in the hand of God, in which person's hand will the person be steady? In which person's hand? Let's ask God for mercy. Let's ask God to show me every brokenness. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. It. Those of you here, can you be upstanding? Just be upstanding. Follow this. This. Follow this. Follow this pastor. Follow this pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Church, lift your hand. Time is up. We can clap for anything. There are times you don't need to clap. Please, let's be sensitive to the spirit. Lift your hands. This is the last. Father, you are, we are grateful. Thank you. Open your mouth and just ask God for something. Say, God, this service is for me. Whatever that is broken in my life, Help me and put it together. Thou great potter in Jesus' name. Go on to pray as the pastor comes up.